Praise God. I want to tell you one thing here. Do you see the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament? There's one thing I want to remind us here. And we see there, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ moved to that, uh, you know, that, uh, what is that, to the pool of Bethesda, isn't it? And where he healed the man who was waiting for the, you know, for the stirring of the water, isn't it? An angel came and stirred up and... But we see there one tremendous thing is, you know, this ministry, which is raised up by the Father, originated in the Father, will only do that which the Father would say. He moved to that place, that pool of Bethesda. And he didn't say, you know, here are my handbills of what I have performed in Jerusalem. He didn't say, here is my, my film about my convention in Galilee. We see this ministry moving there. <coughs> and he moves on to that one man in that place. To that one man in that place. To that one man in that place. Hallelujah. To that one man who is depending upon Something which is temporary. And this ministry moves there and brings that wholeness to him. There were many more people, isn't it? Do we read in the scripture about his healing any, anybody else there? That's all. Praise God. Beloved, this ministry is something that is from the Father's throne. Praise God. From the Father's throne. You'll see different aspects of that later on as the Lord wills us. But I, what I would like to say here is, yeah, today we see there are many people who are caught up in the zeal of the flesh. But Jesus did not. I tell you, if somebody else went there, one of these American preachers and the evangelists of today would go to the pool of Bethesda, he will say, here comes the man of the hour. <laughs> All those who are here, come on in the name of the Lord, be healed. But Jesus did not say that. That is this excellent ministry. Did he not come to heal the sick? He did come. Praise God. And I think the Lord wants us to see this. And I believe that it is so easy for us. Sometimes I know that some of us are in far places. And you are standing alone for God and with God. And then you see these big fishes coming there, big giants, and they're doing all kinds of circus. They're trying to stir up the people like the angel that came and stirred the waters. <laughs> but here is a man with a ministry standing there in the pool of Bethesda. Went to that man ordained of the Father. Why? And he did it on a Sabbath, I believe. Why when he did it on the Sabbath, people got angry? Even on the places. That's the mark of that ministry. You know what Jesus says? I see my Father doing. So I do it. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I see my Father doing it. So I am bound to do it. If I came in my own name, you would have accepted me. Now, because I have come in my Father's name, you persecute me. Beloved, if you would stand in this ministry which God has ordained for you, there is a reproach, there is a persecution. But this excellent ministry is an eternal ministry. There is nothing that will burn up in this ministry, but it's a continuing ministry. Do you believe that? Amen. It's a continuing ministry because... This ministry of the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, it is an endless ministry. Do you realize that? Praise God. There's nothing to burn there. There is no chaff there. There is nothing built with the hay, stubble and wood there. 
but it is built in the will of the Father. It's a continuation when he shall come and establish his kingdom. So, beloved brothers, the Lord wants us to know this. Yeah, today we see that, you know, everywhere, all around, if we turn, we see, we see men doing many kinds of ministries. And many times we are tempted. <coughs> many times we think and be, we are bewildered in our lives. Lord, why is it like this? Lord, why is it like that? I want to encourage you. Release yourself to the Lord. But never say in your heart, Look, Lord, what's happening in those places. Why it's not happening here with me? For you have been called to a different ministry. Your calling is different. Your ministry is different. You are not to keep yourself in the wisdom of man, but we are called to be those who will walk in the wisdom of the Father. And I know we have a long way to go, but God is not tired of us. Can you agree with me? God is not tired of us. He is not tired of us. Jesus Christ is not disgraced of us. When we can turn to Him in true repentance, and cry out to him in these days for the release of this ministry in our lives and through us in these days. You know, in the present church world, we see men are so caught up in their own zeal with many, many programs, many projects, many projects, many programs, and endless activities, and manpower, and, and money is thrown in. Are you able to see that, beloved? And when you see all that, what is your cry inside? Did the heathen fear the name of the Lord by saying it? No. The heathen does not. closely what is that glory again we read that the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy Praise the Lord. Eh? Romans chapter verse the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit the glory of God is the lifestyle of his people in union with the Lord himself that is the glory. The lifestyle of the subjects, the lifestyle of God's people together in union with God. That is the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is what the Lord has said. You know, when you look at the tabernacle, when the tabernacle was totally finished. According to the pattern it was raised up. And we see very clearly when everything is finished up according to the pattern. What happened? The glory filled the tabernacle. Did the nation see the glory? Yes, yes. by all means. Praise God. Philistines were afraid. Why? Why? The glory cloud was there above the tabernacle. Nations shall fear the name of the Lord and the king's thy glory. Beloved, today who is concerned about his name? Today who is concerned about his glory? Men are caught up with their ministry. Men are caught up with their projects. Men are caught up with soul winning. You know, it looks such a good word, isn't it? Soul winning. But look at the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know that the ministry that the Lord Jesus Christ came to do is the ministry which the Father desired upon this earth. Father desired upon this earth. Yeah, we need to be therefore caught up with this. 
So we see the glory of the Lord is. The king shall see thy glory. It's a lifestyle of a people. A people who in union with God will show for the life to this world. Now let's see again one or two scriptures for this morning and then maybe, maybe we'll close for this morning. You know, we see in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven how are the heathen see going to see thy glory what is that glory? That's a lifestyle, isn't it? It's a lifestyle of a people. A lifestyle of a people in union with God and with one another. A lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of a people. And that life is a light unto men. <clears throat> Glorify the Father in heaven. That means the heaven will have to see something. It is not enough that he can hear something, but the heathen will have to see something. The heathen will have to see something. That does not mean now that I go about and begin to do all good works. Tomorrow I go, make some money and give 5,000 people with biryani. Somebody has done it in Delhi. Fed 5,000 people with 5,000 packets of biryani and he came to my house the other day. So we see there are many people therefore would like to go about and do good works. But do you know that Jesus Christ did not do such good works? Praise God. Many a time people so misrepresent Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not just go about doing good works in his own zeal. But he did that which the Father told him to do. Even in the pool of Bethesda. He did not go about healing everybody, saying that now I got something to give you. Don't wait for the angel to come. Here am I with the ministry. He did not. So we, we need to know what is this good work. It's not that, you know, that we go about pleasing everybody, doing everybody. When they say, yeah, this is also right. You know your head to do good works. Yes, and you join with them. That is not good works. And if you are a man who would like to do good works like that, you know who they will see? They will see yourself, not the Father. <laughs> if you go about feeding another 500 people tomorrow and special Christmas program in Delhi slums and special program here and now for students, and special program here now for these, you know, uh, people in the schools and, and colleges. They will see what? They will see your own good works and shall glorify you. So as a result of all that good works, one day they will say, Dr. Sam Russell, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, Dr. Sen, because they have been doing good works. <laughs> They will give you a title. They will make you an honorable person. But God is not honored. Praise God. God is not honored. But the Lord says, they shall see your good works and glorify that. Father, so these good works are different from the good works that we see people do in the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good works. Uh, the, the people shall see thy good works and glorify the name of the Lord. They will see me. They will see you. And they will applaud you. They will exalt you. Yeah, this is what we see in the Christian world today. That's what we see today in the Christian world. 
Men are trying to do activities. And their desire is that they may what, do what? Lift up the name of the Lord. There are some people with this slogan, gospel for the whole man. You understand the whole man? Means it's also for the body. <laughs> so give them shoes and chapels and, and shirts and pants and everything. And the moment you stop the shoes and chapels, that's all. They don't see the, the father there. They don't see glorify the father there. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters. Sorry, no sisters here. Brothers, we need to know that we are called to this kind of ministry. Which will glorify the father. That the heathen shall see, the king shall see thy glory. And that is not just works that we do through our human zeal. Today we see there are many who are doing good works by their own soul power. Their strength, their zeal. Now we should not be motivated by those things. We have to allow I need to yield myself to the working of His grace in me. You need to give yourself to the working of His grace in you. Yeah, when we allow, when we surrender our lives to the Lord and allow the Lord and His grace to work in us. As we read in the book of Philippians chapter 2, the Lord is the one who both wills and does a good work in us. Yeah, when God will see that openness in you and me, who is open for the Lord to do a work in us, praise God, He is willing to do that work in us. Because He is already willing. And He will do that work in us. Praise God. Now are we open? He is now there in the throne room with the ministry. And where is He calling us? He is calling us to His living room. Praise God. You know, He is not calling us to the out, outer court there. He is not calling us to the outhouse there, but He is calling us to His living room, which is also His loving room, which is also His mercy room. And we are called to sit with Him in His mercy seat. Praise God. There is a ministry that shall come forth from that place in this hour. As He is, so are we in this world. As He is, he is with a ministry in the throne. And He is calling us into this dimension that this ministry may come forth upon this earth in this hour. That, that His purposes may be fulfilled. That He may build up Zion in these days. That, that, that His servants may take pleasure in her stones. That heathen may fear the name of the Lord. And the King shall see the glory. And you know, it is through these things that God wants to really show forth His name in these days, beloved. So we have been called into a different ministry. We have been called to, to really take pleasure in these stones and to build up Zion in these days. Turn again to Psalm 102. Psalm 102 and verse 16. Someone please read. And that will be the last reference for us now. The Lord. Mm. Zion, yeah. Praise God. When the Lord shall build Zion, He shall appear in His glory. Praise God. We are called to be builders of Zion. We are called to build together in Zion and to be His Zion. He shall appear in glory. Men shall see the good works. Men shall see the lives of His people. Men shall see the glory, and that shall fear the name of the Lord. The king shall see the, see the glory of God. Do you know one thing? In other words, it may be too deep for us, but it's right in the scripture language to say, we are his glory. Yes, no? Yes. Men shall see your good works and glorify. See you. Yes, no? Yes. See you. In other words, it may be too deep, but that's a reality. We are His glory. We are His glory. When we will begin to reflect Him, when we will begin to reflect what He desires to do, we are His glory. 
We are only trying to glean in the field today morning. We will see more in the evening. So let us take these thoughts, beloved. We have been called into a higher ministry, to an excellent ministry. We have been called into that living room and the loving room of the Lord, to the third room in the house of God, into the very presence of God. But there's only one way to get there, and that is through the veil. There's a losing, there's a rending, you know, there is going to be a, a, a selling out, there is a surrendering there. And it is sure that when we walk out of this cloud, we will walk out with a different face. We will walk out as a changed person. We will walk out with a ministry which is so different from what we have been doing.